Hello and welcome to the pods episode two. My name is Sheila Quinn and I'm the recreational activities technician for Champlain College Lenoxville. As promised in our first episode, we're going to talk about COVID-19 in this episode. One of the things as a community that is challenging to deal with is something that nobody can predict. And honestly, that's part of the game when it comes to a pandemic. But that doesn't stop us from trying to figure out ways that we can stay safe, that we can have a successful and awesome year. So there are different protocols in place depending on where you are. And uh, I'm going to share some of that information with you right now. When it comes to school, we're looking at something that's a hybrid model. That means that there'll be a combination of several different approaches to schooling this year. Some courses will require you to go to campus for different parts of your schooling, like visual arts, or if you have labs to do in sciences, nursing, special care counseling, and occasionally other classes as well too, like our computer sciences program. That means that you would have to take measures to make sure that you've washed your hands, that you have a mask handy, and that you pay attention to your schedule so that you can see if a teacher has asked you to come to campus. You will be advised if that is something that you have to do. That being said, a lot of our schooling will take place online this year. Uh, as you can see, I'm well, I don't know if you can predict this yourself, but I'm not in a Champlain office right now, but I am in a Champlain office right now. This is my own personal office at home, and this is where I've been working from for the summer, with a couple of exceptions uh, going into campus for things that I needed, kind of in the same way that you will if you are requested by a teacher. And uh, it has its ups and downs. <laughs> As you guys know, uh, learning at a distance can, or working at a distance can be kind of a, a funny thing and a, uh, a great thing in many ways as well too. So the idea is to try and create a plan for yourself for your own personal success. That goes for us too as the staff at Champlain. If you're in residence, it's a bit of a different story. I'm going to read to you guys a little bit of information. This is stuff that could apply. This applies to people who are going to be living in residence for Champlain, Lenoxville. But also, if you know people who are living in, in residence, you may be wondering how things work. And there may be things in this information, uh, details in this information that you would like to apply uh, to your own living circumstances, no matter where you are, uh, whether you're traveling, living at home, um, living in the community, living in an apartment. Uh, renting a room, depending on what your, your situation is. So here's a, a little bit of information. For residents, it's really, really important to follow the rules, everyone. Uh, if you don't, you can have your lease canceled. So please make sure to pay attention. If you look in your lease, the information that I'm sharing with you right now, this annex is available in your, uh, in your lease itself. So um, yeah, we really, really need to take it seriously. So here's some of the information from that. So you have to respect the slot for your move-in date. I'm taking this directly from the document, by the way. When you go through this, you'll be able to see this information. So you really have to, to respect that move-in date. And please make sure by email you've contacted residents uh, now, basically, to uh, because two weeks before your scheduled move-in date is when you're supposed to have contacted them. I'm sure you've already gotten this information and you've already contacted them, but it's important that you know. Before moving in, you have to view uh, a video that was provided by the Ministère de la Santé et Services Sociaux that has to do with how to wear and remove a face cover, so a mask. And uh, below, I'm going to put that link in the comments, so make sure to check that out. You'll also have to attend uh, a training and about sanitary instructions and rules of circulation in residents, symptoms of COVID-19 and the procedure to follow in case of symptoms. So every student has to have prior to moving in 
uh, this is in residence, but if you're not living in residence, this isn't a bad thing to have if you're living somewhere else. So you could add this to your list of stuff that you need for your apartment. A functional digital thermometer and a sufficient quantity of face covers and procedure masks or procedure masks. And one mask will be provided by the college with some hand sanitizer. You'll be receiving that on orientation day uh, on August 27th with your gear when you come for your campus tour. Uh, that being said, make sure you have other ones uh, as well too though. Also, uh, you can actually buy other masks at the bookstore as well too. So when you arrive at residence, you have to register at the entrance of residences and provide your name, your contact information, and your arrival and departure times and provide a health, clear, uh, health declaration. And there's instructions on how to proceed that'll be given to you before the start of term. So before you enter the residence, you have to always make sure that your hand hygiene is looked after. So make sure that you're, you have used hand sanitizer and um, also very regularly wash your hands with soap and water. That's the preferred method. It, it seems to work the best. Um, you have to be alone in your private unit. You maintain a physical distance of two meters between each person at all times, including employees and other residents whenever possible. Um, you must wear a procedural mask for face covers when the physical distance provided uh, that's mentioned can't be man maintained, including with um, other members of your, your cohort. So also, uh, the next thing we'll talk about a little bit is respiratory et etiquette, because that's a thing and is necessary for all of us as well too. Respiratory et etiquette. So, okay, here's this information means to cough or sneeze into your elbow. That's something we've been practicing for quite a long time, long before COVID-19 came around, so we just keep doing that. Uh, make sure to dispose of disposable tissues immediately after use, and uh, you should do that anyway, and wash your hands after coughing, sneezing, or blowing your nose. In terms of your movements around residents, you really have to limit your, your movements, and the common areas, unfortunately, are going to be closed. You have to limit your travel to other regions of the province as well as to other provinces. Uh, travel outside of Canada is strongly discouraged. Any student returning from travel outside of Canada has to comply with the orders made under the Quarantine Act. So if you've traveled outside of Canada less than 14 days before the beginning of your lease or at any time during the term of your lease, you'll be required to file a detailed plan of the quarantine arrangements. So that includes provision for food, medication, and any other necessary arrangements. So this plan uh, will be forwarded in writing to the residence team uh, at residence at crcmail.net. So it has to be approved before the student enters or returns to the residence. So um, the, this is common and private spaces. So the common areas are closed and inaccessible to students right now. Uh, and then there's an accessibility to the laundry room, but you have to schedule it with the, the RAs, the residence attendants. The common areas that are identified within your lease and uh, their terms of access can be modified by the college at any time. So you really have to pay attention to that and you will be informed of any modica modifications by email. You need to respect at all times ground markings for, for queues, so lining up, and arrows indicating traffic direction. Everybody's had a lot of experience with that the last while going to the grocery store or any other store for that matter. There are unfortunately no visitors allowed in residence, either in the common or private areas. And uh, there you have it for those rules. The next thing we're going to look at is what to do if you think you may have a COVID-19 infection. Any student that's experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 has to immediately isolate themselves in their private unit and immediately inform the residence team at residence at crcmail.net or student services at student services hyphen Linux at crcmail.net. The symptoms are fever greater than 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, cough, sudden loss of smell or taste without nasal congestion, difficulty breathing, sore throat, headaches, 
severe fatigue, muscle aches and pains, and diarrhea. Any student who has been in contact with a person who is suspected awaiting a COVID-19 test or who has tested positive for COVID-19 must immediately isolate themselves in their private unit and immediately inform the residence team at the emails mentioned before. All of this information, once again, you can find in your lease. So residence at crcmail.net or student services at student services hyphen lennox at crcmail.net. And psychosocial support will be available on the website at the beginning of September 2020. So that was a little bit, a lot, about how we're going to have to adapt to COVID-19 as a community in terms of the, the rules and regulations and how to keep ourselves safe. So that being said, uh, here's a little anecdote for you. So back in the early 90s, the first movie, in my recollection at least, that beautiful Centennial Theater in the heart of our campus showed with surround sound was Jurassic Park. What an experience that was. Uh, it was just, it was an amazing thing. Now we're so used to it because it's in all theaters. But at the time, the sound did not come from all around you. And hearing velociraptors and, you know, T-Rexes walk around behind you was pretty unsettling. And I can remember a couple of Cougar football players who were absolutely terrified after that movie, much to our joy. That was very funny to watch them be rather nervous about it. So there's a quote in that movie in Jurassic Park uh, said by Jeff Goldblum's character, that's life finds a way. And you know what? So will we. COVID-19 doesn't have to, to mean that we stop living. And Lenoxville and the Eastern Townships is such a beautiful place to discover. I understand that sometimes reading or hearing that you're not really supposed to travel or that you're not really supposed to leave the area or that you're so that you're limited as far as that goes. You also have the beautiful benefit of being in a community where you can actually get outside really quite easily and you not have to worry about a mask as much. So as, as our friends who are living in more urban areas. So keep one with you, keep one in, in your pocket, like stick it in your stuff and just have it there, have a couple just in case. But if you wanna go out and discover the area, like there's so much to see, it's so gorgeous. Uh, right down in town, you can get to the bike trail that's not completely flat, but almost. And you can go all the way to North, the beautiful town of North Hatley and discover that area. Uh, you can take it as a walking trail as well, too. Campus is absolutely gorgeous. So when you do have an opportunity to visit for your tour, I know that you'll love that as well, too. Uh, there are other things as well that are in the area to discover. There's the lovely Café Faro that's down on Queen Street in Lenoxville. And uh, that's very, very accessible. It's just to the, the left of the traffic light when you're coming down the hill. We have one traffic light, guys. We have one traffic light. That is how easy it is to make your way around our area. Uh, so discover the area, do it in a safe way and enjoy yourselves and take this opportunity to start making the plans of your dreams. Start thinking about your plan for success because that's your, the opportunity that this is a different format for learning, but in many ways it's not because a lot of motivation and drive to succeed comes from inside, no matter what the circumstances a person is living under. There were not the first people ever to live under dire circumstances by any stretch of the imagination. And that doesn't make it any more fun, but it definitely makes it a common thread through human existence. So and from adversity, sometimes, you know, it's like squeezing coal to make a diamond. I don't know that much about science, but that's pretty impressive. And, uh, uh, you know, how pearls are formed from sand in a, in a shell. You guys are that. You are diamonds in the rough. And uh, so creating your success plan and paying attention to these rules. These rules aren't, we're not putting them in place because we're all excited about them and want to put them in place. We're doing it because we want you guys to be safe. We want you guys to have a successful and amazing year. So 
let's all respect this as a community. Let's work, we're all working at it as a community. You're not alone. You can reach out. You're gonna learn all about the service, the student services team um, in the weeks to come and leading up to, and on the day of orientation where you'll actually get to see us in person, which is pretty amazing. And we look so forward to that. So we know we have to adapt as a community. That's what's coming. We've had to adapt as a province. We've had to adapt as a, as a country. We've had to, to adapt as a world to what's going on right now. And this too shall pass. And the best way that it can pass is if we look after each other. So we're here for you. We know that you guys are going to succeed. We know that within you, you have the seeds of all that brilliance and amazingness. So yes, this is COVID-19 season. <laughs> this is a COVID-19 period. This is COVID-19 ad adaptation, but we're doing this as a group. And uh, so there you have it. So these are the, the rules and regulations that have been devised for these very unusual circumstances, but that does not outline how you succeed and how great your life can be. And we know that you're capable. So there you go, guys. This is episode two of the pods, the COVID-19 edition. If you have any questions, if you want to reach out and if you need to connect with the Cougar Ambassador, if you need to connect with me, Sheila Quinn, uh, if you look on the Champlain website, you'll see there's a directory. Drop that down and look for the only staff member whose last name starts with Q. Then that's me, Sheila Quinn. So for the pods, for the Cougar Ambassadors in Champlain College, Lennoxville, thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day.